Our gospel reading comes from Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. We get a lesson from Jesus. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you've regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This ends our reading of the word. Please join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Do you ever find yourself the unwilling observer of the squabble between two friends or relatives? Sometimes the things people get upset over and the things that they argue about are so simple, so petty, that I want to say, okay kids, play nice with each other. And sometimes it's me that needs to be reminded to be nice. Jesus certainly understood human behavior. Notice he said, if another member of the church sins against you, he knew it would happen. He knew we would do things to hurt each other and to anger each other. He knew it wasn't enough to tell us to love each other in the same way that he loves us. We are human and we mess up. Sometimes we mess up by doing or saying something wrong. Sometimes we mess up by misinterpreting what another person has said or done. Regardless of which person is at fault, feelings get hurt, tempers can flare, and the little disagreements between two people can fester and infect an entire congregation. Little things grow, and soon everyone is choosing sides instead of choosing love. Before long, a church, or a family, or a group, or even a few friends are torn apart with hurts so big they may never fully repair the rifts. In his wisdom, Jesus gave us a plan, a way to handle those times when there's an issue driving a wedge between us. It's such a simple plan, it almost seems as though he shouldn't have needed to put it into action in the first place. But, in spite of its simplicity, it sometimes is very difficult to carry it out. It isn't always easy to go to a person who has said or done something that bothers us. It's much easier to take our complaints to a third party, to do some griping, spew some anger, and brood over our perceived injuries, rather than to be direct, open, and honest with the one that is the focus of our negative emotions. Initially, approaching someone to air a grievance is uncomfortable for both people. But when both remember the love they have for each other, the discomfort is replaced by appreciation, and problems can be solved. A couple of months ago, one of you put this plan of Jesus into motion right here. One of you, who I won't name because I didn't ask permission to share this story, called me and asked for a time when we could talk. This person was very careful in how the situation was approached to be sure I would receive the complaint in love. First, some gentle conversation affirming the bond we share. Then, after an atmosphere of love was established, the person calmly spoke about the issue that was making our friend comfortable. 
I was so grateful for the honesty and so appreciative of the trust that we could work it out that I was receptive to the critique. We both were able to share our opinions and explain ourselves. We finished our conversation and then parted with hugs. The entire time that we were talking, I kept thinking, this is how the church is supposed to work. I am so grateful that this person was able to come to me. I feel loved and honored that this is being dealt with in a healthy manner, rather than taking complaints and concerns under your own and creating grumbling within the congregation. I'm sure our friend thought very long and hard before calling to schedule an appointment. I'm sure the conversation was, was not as easy to start as it appeared to be. But I'm also certain that it was absolutely the right thing to do. Now, we both know the other person's heart, and we both have shown respect to the other. Our relationship continues, and our difference of opinion is also free to continue. However, because of our conversation, that difference is now powerless to separate us. The friend showed me respect and love, risking being misunderstood by bringing up the issue. I respect that other perspective, and I love the person with that viewpoint. Following the plan Jesus gave us, our friend brought healing before things got ugly between us. Jesus was smart, really smart about human behavior. This plan works. Go to the person. If that doesn't work, take a couple people with you as witnesses. Not as a game to work them over, but as witnesses. And if that doesn't work, go to the church. The final step is a trick, though. Jesus said if going before the entire church didn't resolve the issue, then treat the other person as a Gentile or a tax collector. In other words, they're an outsider. Except here's the catch. How did Jesus treat Gentiles and tax collectors? With love, respect, and welcome. <coughs> so, if you followed all the right procedures and your relationship is still not repaired, you still need to treat the other person well. There is never a time in this plan of Jesus that you get to do paybacks. Got to love a guy who has it all figured out and even knows how to plug the loopholes. We are commanded to love each other. There is no debate on that issue. The problem is we're individuals with our own perspectives and our own ideas for the right way to do things. Because we're a diverse group, problems will arise. Thankfully, we have a model for dealing with them, so none of us needs to say, it's my ball and I don't want to play with you anymore. I'm taking my ball and going home. We have rules of engagement so that our fights will be fair. No choosing sides, just listening and loving and respecting. No getting kicked out of the club or disowned as part of the family or excommunicated from the church. Loving each other as Christ loves us, we maintain our ties to each other, air our disagreements respectfully, and find common ground to move forward. The truth is, we don't need to agree with each other about everything in order to love each other well and support each other on our life journeys. The diversity of thought is what creates the beauty of the church family. Much like the diversity of fabrics and a banner creating a spectacular whole. May we remember always that when differences arise, we have a formula for addressing them and a love big enough to embrace us as we move through that process. Amen. Amen.